It's all here in our latest lead read, Hatching Twitter, a true story of money, power, friendship, and betrayal. The author and New York Times business columnist Nick Belton joins me now from New York City. Nick, nice timing, my friend. Nice timing on the publishing of this book. H hashtag hi, Jake. <laughs> so let's start with Twitter's IPO. You said you think the company is actually undervalued. That's well, I said counterintuitive. that. Well, why do you think that? I said that when they were going public today at 26, I think at 44, 45, or whatever it closed at, that's a pretty big number. I don't know where it's going to go from there. Um, but it was, uh, it was amazing. I think what's really fascinating to me is some of these founders that I wrote about in the book, you know, at the end of the book, I say that they are going to be worth hundreds of millions or a billion dollars, and they actually doubled their, uh, their worth today. Some of them that were worth a billion are now worth two billion. So these four men who are there at the beginning of Twitter, Evan Williams, Jack Dorsey, Noah Glass, and Biz Stone, uh, who you profile in your book, not only a rocky start at the launch of Twitter, but things really got nasty between the friends when it came to figuring out who was the best person to run the company. Exactly. So the, the story is, you know, there's these four founders, these guys that came from, uh, from all over America. Um, Evan Williams grew up in a farm with, in Clarkson, Nebraska. It's like a town of 250, 60 people. Uh, Biz Stone grew up on welfare. Um, you know, Noah Glass was born on a commune. And they all went to San Francisco and to Silicon Valley in search of what we call the modern day dream, you know, tech, tech money. Um, and they came together and they were four very close friends and they accidentally built Twitter and it, as a result um, completely tore their friendships apart. And some of them ended up as billionaires, as we saw today, and some of them ended up with actually next to nothing. And what you write and capture really well in the book is the, the one of the things uh, is the, the frustration that Ev Williams in particular felt about Jack Dorsey talking to yep. the press, making it sound as if he was the sole inventor of Twitter. I actually interviewed Dorsey back in March. I want to play some sound. Here's what he told me about the start of Twitter. Cool. When I moved here um, in 2000, I realized I had this beautiful picture of the city. I could see like these swarms to the Met when there was a show uh, in taxi cabs where I could see emergencies happen in real time. But I was missing the people. Where were the people? What were they doing? Where are they going? And that's where the idea came from. What if you could, anywhere you are, just uh, send out what you're doing, where you are, where you're going, and anyone could receive it. So that's the kind of language I think that probably infuriates some of his co-founders. Who, who invented Twitter? Well, it certainly wasn't just Jack Dorsey alone. It was, it was everyone that was in the room at the time. Um, there were you know, 12 people that worked at this company called Odeo. It was a podcasting company that created Twitter. But the real genesis, I think, came from Noah Glass and Jack Dorsey. And it was one night in the car. They were drunk and they'd been out drinking and dancing, which was a typical affair, you know, when you're in your late 20s out in San Francisco. And uh, Noah Glass was going through a really terrible divorce. And he and his company was failing. Um, and he was talking to Jack. And Jack had this idea of the status update, where you could update your status and your friends would be able to see what you were doing. But it was very simple. It was very simplistic. And Noah, and people had heard it. There were similar things out there. And Noah had this realization, being how lonely he was with his divorce and everything, that if you could use it to connect to people and feel quote unquote less alone, that you would actually be able to use the service in a completely different way. And then once you brought in Evan Williams and Biz Stone, who had pioneered blogging, it took on this entirely different life form. Um, and together, the four of them and the other people that worked there created what it is today. So we only have uh, about 45 seconds left. I guess my basic question for you is, how are they going to make money? For people, all these people investing have hopes that Twitter's going to be able to, to, to actually deliver profits. How are they going to be able to do that? Well, the company could be profitable today. You know, they've, they've acquired dozens and dozens of companies. They're now up to 2,000 employees. And this year, they're going to make about $640 million in revenue. Next year, it'll be over a billion. So they are making money. They're just choosing to, rather than to say that they're going to be profitable, to actually reinvest that money within the company. Um, and I think that that's going to continue to happen in this public offering. I mean, they were originally supposed to raise over a billion. It's now gone over to, to over two billion. That's going to be that's going to go to expanding internationally, hiring new employees, um, and continuing to get it to that point where they are a profitable company. All right, Nick Belton of the New York Times and the new book Hatching Twitter. Thank you so much. Good luck with Thank the book. You. Appreciate. It.